Those of you familiar with me know that I'm a big believer in the minimum viable build or MVB method of van building. With it, you start with a very simple design and then spend time in your van because that's the most reliable way to figure out exactly what you need and where you need it. It will naturally lead you to the perfect build for you without wasting a lot of time, money and effort. If you want to learn more about the MVB method of van building, there's a link in the description to a video about it. Recently, this process has guided me to realize that I need to relocate my clothing and some of my lesser used kitchenware. So the logical thing to do is to look to the walls where I've got a lot of extra space. So what I've decided is in the back, I'm going to build an overhead cabinet. Actually, it's going to be a little bit larger than normal overhead cabinets that tend to come down just maybe for the first foot. This one is going to go all the way down to just above the bed, but only across halfway the bed. This is going to leave the front part of the bed still completely open to give me a feeling of space. Anyhow, that's the idea. Let's give it a shot and see how it turns out. Welcome to Sweller Than Dweller. Now, for me, when thinking about doing this, the most important part was probably not what you'd think. Yeah, sure, it needs the right space and dimensions, but the most important thing for me is to make sure that it's safe and secure, so that if I'm going down bumpy roads or have to do a hard break, it's not going to self-destruct. To accomplish that, to the best of my knowledge, I'm going to use two special construction methods. Let's take a look. The first method is using plus nuts. Self-tapping screws are fine for light items, but for anything more significant, we need a more solid foundation to attach to than merely the van skin. Plus nuts are a barrel with threads inside. You insert them into a hole you drill into the van's skin. The barrel is then collapsed to lock the plus nut in place creating a much stronger foundation to attach to than the plain van skin. You then attach your items to the plus nut using bolts which leverage the threads inside of the plus nut barrel. The second method is the use of a pocket hole jig. While plus nuts are used for attaching things to the van, like cabinets, pocket holes and screws are used for joining pieces of wood together in your cabinetry in order to create an ultra strong skeleton, I'm going to utilize the pocket holes and screws in a stick frame type cabinet construction with only a very thin wooden outer skin in order to create an extremely light but very strong cabinet. There is no shortage of information about plus nuts and pocket holes already on the internet. So I'm not going to go in depth on the theory and background of these methods I'll let you research that. I'm going to focus on the implementation and use of them in a real world example using my cabinets. But, but Sweller, how did you determine where to attach the cabinet to the van's walls? Well, you can't attach it to the outer skin, so that rules out this entire area. You have to look to areas where you can attach to the actual frame. I have one railing way up high along the roof, and then one other rail way down much lower. I attached to both of these with two plus nuts in each. But I also wanted some support for the front of the cabinet. So I added a fifth plus nut into the one roof crossbeam that was above my cabinet. Well, here goes. Drilling the first hole for my plus nut. Painless. Just gonna give it a little tap. Now to seat the plus nut, I've got my little homemade tool. Here's my screw I'm gonna use. And I should have a couple of washers like this, but I don't. So I'm just gonna use this angle bracket that's got a little hole in it. And then I'm gonna put on this wrench. And then the other washer. 
And now I'm going to crank this up and it's going to seat the plus nut. The tool's set and now I'm going to use the drill to set the plus nut. At least that's the theory. This is now collapsing the plus nut barrel on the other side of the wall. Let's reverse and see how it looks. Oh man! Perfect! First plus nut! A success! 100%! Look at that, just beautiful. Now that the plus nut's installed into the van wall, I'm going to take the back piece of my cabinet frame and pre-drill a hole for the screw in it. I'm actually going to install the top rearmost part of the cabinet frame first, and that's just because of the way the van wall is shaped here. It kind of has to go in a pretty specific place. Then, based on where that is, I'm going to then install the bottom rear brace to go in line with that. Now once the plus nuts are in, you kind of have to know where to actually find them when you're going through your wood in order to have everything line up. So what I, I don't know if this is the right way, but what I did was I pre-drilled my holes through the wood where I wanted them. So now I'm just gonna put the drill bit through that and run it a bit to make a mark on the wall exactly where the plus nut should be drilled. Right there. So with the mark there, now I know exactly where to drill the hole for the plus nut. And it will magically line up with the hole in the wood. I gotta say, drilling holes in your van is a little bit nerve-wracking, even for a crazy lunatic like me. All right, let's seat that puppy. Okay, assemble our homemade thingamajig tool. Let's get it started. Oh, such a beautiful thing. So I'm going to actually temporarily attach this so that it will give me the exact positioning for the hole on the other side. Oh man, my first plus nut installed and the brace screwed into it. It's a beautiful thing. Now we can switch drill bits and Make our mark for the second hole. All right, about 12 hours and I've got the cabinet base formed. <laughs> Just kidding, not 12 hours, but it's taken me a while. Now that we're into building the actual stick frame of the cabinet, this is where we're going to start utilizing pocket holes and pocket screws to connect the individual pieces of wood to create ultra strong joints. Each joint will have two pocket holes I'm making sure to drill the holes on the inside of the frame so that they are hidden. This is critical on the front side that won't have any paneling to hide them. The uh, first pocket holes I drilled uh, ended up splitting the wood so I had to adjust things and uh, recut some new wood and uh, now I think I got it nailed. I'm not splitting the wood anymore. So hopefully things will go much faster now. Now I'm probably getting a little too picky here, but I've got the level on here now and I'm actually building the cabinet so that it slopes ever so slightly towards the wall so that when I'm on bumpy roads and stuff and everything's jiggling inside, it's going to jiggle back to the uh, 
back of the cabinet, if every, if anything, and not to the front. Um, but yeah, it's just a very, very slight, uh, slight angle. And so now I'm going to work backwards to see how, uh, how long I need to make my, my vertical braces by holding the top brace on and then measuring this distance. So I get the exact height I want to get that slope. Right now I'm using a plumb to figure out exactly where I need to position my upper brace to be in line with the lower one. After using the plumb to find out where I should position the upper brace, I'm now holding the upper brace in place while I measure the distance down to the lower platform so I know how big to make my front vertical braces that are going to go right here. Now I know what you're saying. Why are you not just building a square box? Because the side walls are not straight. They're curved. The roof is not straight. It's curved. Every surface is curved. So I'm kind of starting with one piece and then building outward from that and constructing the cabinet as I go. I don't know if this is the right way, but it seems to be working. All right, my friends. Now I am really getting somewhere. You can see that the uh, basic frame is really coming along and it's actually feeling super solid with the pocket screws and the plus nuts. And I don't think I mentioned uh, this entire frame is three by one. I was originally going to use two by one, but I read that uh, with pocket screws, it's kind of dicey to put in two pocket screws in only a two inch wide piece of lumber. So I had some uh, three by one laying around and that's what I used. And uh, yeah, it seems to be working good. Plus the wider three inch uh, will give me actually a better face uh, for putting my cabinets on or putting my cabinet doors on. Uh, it's just a wider place for them to land. Um, so yeah, I think it's good all in all. The only issue that I need to think about uh, taking more action on right now is I've only got the top screwed in with one plus nut and it's actually plenty strong enough to uh, hold what I'm putting in there because I'm just putting clothes and things nothing super super heavy but uh, it, it you can see well you probably can't see I don't want to twist it too much but it, it can twist it can swivel because it's only got one plus nut so um, I mean overall that's not really gonna hurt anything um, but I think I just need to uh, put some bracing uh, up up here uh, this way just to stop the torsion I'm sort of getting there <laughs> every time I think about it I've got a lot more to do but it feels like I've come a long ways this was the biggest worry for me was uh, getting it installed into the metal of the van with the boss nuts and getting used to this pocket jig all right, as you can see, I've got these two new support beams in the very back cut. They're not screwed in. I'm going to have to take it off the wall to do that. Okay, we're going to remount the cabinet frame for hopefully the last time. It's still only partially built, but right now it's still flexible. And I want it to be flexible so that I don't have any problems realigning it with these plus nuts that are in a specific spot. Once it's mounted and solidly locked in place, then I'll fit the final braces nicely into the places where they fit. And if I need to move any of the final braces a little bit, I have that flexibility, but I can't move the plus nut bolts. They are locked in place in the middle, so I have to work around them. All right, it's on. And it's solid. Now let's get some of the shelf braces on. You can see that I've pre-screwed in some of the pocket screws just to make it easier on myself because it's a bit awkward here. The top one's gonna be about right there. Well, there we have it. First level of shelf supports in. And as promised, 
they do have a slight slope down towards the van wall so that when I'm going along bumpy roads and things are jiggling around a bit, they'll jiggle towards the wall and not out the front of the cabinet. Well, at least that's a theory. Good news! Shelf braces are all in. I've got one, two, three levels. We're getting there. A lot of progress, but a lot of work. There we have it. The front two braces in. Wow. This thing is super, super solid. Way more solid than I imagined. Now all we got to do is put in the shelf bases along the bottoms and put on the sides and then put on some doors in the front. Now before I seal this up, I'm going to tell you a little secret. What I'm going to do for this top shelf is I'm actually going to put in a false bottom so that I'll have a little airspace in here and I'll actually have two shelves with an airspace in the middle. Just a little one. So that'll be a double layered shelf with just a little area in here that's hidden. It'll be a secret place where I store my crappy old laptop and my cheap waxy chocolate. Anyhow, that's the idea. The shelves are roughly installed. I've got a, my original cardboard design from a long time ago. Uh, I'm going to now use it to scribe a pattern, a contour of this wall so that I can cut my real end panel and it's going to fit nicely. Um, yeah, scribing, scribing is not fun. I've never had a lot of easy success with it, but we'll give it a shot. So how do you like the hack together template for the skin of my cabinet? It's epic. All screwed together. What a crazy piece of work. Look at this thing. But it worked like a charm. It's been what seems like an endless amount of fidgeting and work, but I finally got it nearly completed. Well, it is pretty much completed. I just got to put the side skin on. But I've got my bottom shelf where I'm going to keep the clothes. And then a second shelf where I'll maybe keep some uh, random kitchen gadgets that I don't use every day. And, I don't know, extra food, stuff like that. And then I've got my top, which is where I'm going to put my laptop, my book, just sort of random uh, evening things. And... It's got the secret bottom. For when I'm in areas that seem kind of a bit dodgy, and maybe I'm going on a hike, I'm in the middle of nowhere, but there's other cars around, or I don't know. I'm just in a place where I just don't feel like it's that safe, but I got to leave the van. Um, I can put my absolute necessities under this false bottom, like extra cash, Maybe maybe my laptop or whatever is my photos, things that I absolutely don't want to lose. Um, you know, just whatever. I don't know. But I can just lift this false bottom a bit and put stuff underneath there. And when you're looking at it from the top, you're just feeling around. I mean, this feels like the base, but it's not. There's stuff under it. So, and, and it's nice, it's got this, it's, it's against the roof, and uh, it's got this uh, sort of rail here that prevents stuff from coming out, but it also sort of makes it hard to see in there, so you kind of got to feel it around with your hand. So, I think it's something that, you know, it's it's really not something that people would discover if they're if they're in here, and they shouldn't be, and they're looking for stuff. They'll just look in here, they'll look in all the, obvi look in all the obvious places, and they'll just miss that part. So, yeah, all I have to do now is put on the skin like this, and then I'm pretty much done. <sighs> so there we have it, my friends, the fully finished product. 
Some of you might notice that my doors open left to right, instead of swinging upward as I originally envisioned. But with my one door quite low, an upward swinging door would have got in the way both visually and functionally, and I figured doors that would swing open right to left would work much better. And you know what? These are no normal cabinet doors with no normal cabinet door hinges. These hinges don't open 90 degrees. These hinges open 110 degrees. Look at that, because I need big access, so I've got it. You can see that I attached a screw to the side of each doorknob with an elastic hitch to it that I put around the knob to ensure that the doors don't swing open when I'm on the corners or rough roads. The only extra thing I might do is put a piece of uh, skin up here just to close that top off um, and then it will simply be just this section that's open and then this will be closed off. I don't know. I'm not too fussy. It's like 99.99% of the way there and it's fully functional so I'm just going to think about it and take a break and start to enjoy it. If you don't just think I'm some sort of crazy lunatic, well then I'd be humbled if you would consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. It's the only way you can support me and let me know you like what I'm doing and you want me to continue. Until next time, keep living your dreams. Bye for now.